Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Testimony was so difficult to see and to hear that jurors left the courtroom. We're continuing to follow that trial of a San Antonio mother accused in the murder of her four-year-old daughter. Yeah, some of those jurors need a, needed a break after seeing evidence showing how that little girl died. Our Erica Hernandez breaks down testimony from the lead detective. Collecting evidence, interviews with neighbors and doctors, all part of Sergeant Rachel Barnes's investigation into the death of four-year-old Olivia Briones. Olivia died a day after her mother, Jessica Briones, walked her to a SAPD substation unresponsive on September 5th, 2017. So I'm looking for anything that could cause bumps, bruises, scrapes, that kind of thing. Sergeant Barnes discussed how during a search of Briona's apartment, several items were found that may have been used on Olivia. Those items included broken table legs and a metal bracket. The whole apartment was very clean and orderly and picked up, and then this bar was in the middle. The jury also heard the interview Barnes did with Briona's at police headquarters. That is when she updates her on Olivia's condition. Right now, your daughter is on life support. I don't even know how that's possible. It would get tough for the jury when autopsy photos of Olivia's numerous injuries throughout her body were shown. Several began to cry, and a break had to be taken. Sergeant Barnes's testimony is expected to continue tomorrow. In fact, this trial is expected to go on into next week. At the Kidden Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Now, new developments tonight in the shooting of 17-year-old Eric Gantu by a now-fired San Antonio police officer. So SAPD officials today said that the car that was driven by Gantu had license plates that didn't belong to it, but that the vehicle itself wasn't stolen. Gantu's family says the teen is still in critical condition following a high fever, or fighting a high fever while breathing with a ventilator. Police arrested fired San Antonio police officer James Brennan on Tuesday night. He's charged with two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant after firing at Cantu and a woman in Cantu's vehicle October 2nd. Investigators say the former officer fired half of those shots as Cantu drove away. My immediate concern was looking around at um, where those bullets could potentially end up um, by firing uh, in that manner. Brennan is now free on bond and he is scheduled to be back in court November 23rd. A San Antonio man now behind bars for allegedly killing his co-worker in Florida, according to the Hendry County Sheriff. 36-year-old Vincent Harris allegedly shot and killed 29-year-old Messiah Devon at a hotel earlier this month. Both of them worked for the cleanup company ServPro. Harris now facing murder and evidence tampering charges, and right now he's at the Hendry County Jail. A man is accused of shooting his ex-girlfriend's mother and tying up his own brother, and now he's been arrested. According to an arrest affidavit in this case, 29-year-old James Sweetman was upset that his girlfriend broke up with him and that he had to move out of her family's home. When he was moving out earlier this month, his 17-year-old brother was there helping him. Police say at some point, Sweetman tied up his brother, locking him in a shed. Then he's accused of shooting his ex-girlfriend's mother with a rifle. The mother did survive. Sweetman is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and unlawful restraint. His bond is set at $100,000. Tonight, San Antonio police are still trying to figure out what happened at an apartment complex on the city's west side. So here's what happened. Someone called SAPD to the 6600 block of West Commerce at about 1 o'clock this morning. And when they got there, officers found a 37-year-old man next to a truck in a parking lot. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition and had a head injury. Detectives are having a difficult time learning exactly what happened because they say the victim in this case isn't cooperating. So at this point, they haven't arrested anyone. A woman is recovering this evening after she was thrown from her car on the far north side. That crash happened around 4 this morning on Highway 281 near Summit Church Road. Police say the woman lost control of her vehicle and then rolled into the median. Officers say that crash was caused by the woman that caused the woman rather to be thrown from the vehicle. She was taken to University Hospital and no other cars were involved. Now two men in federal custody after trying to smuggle drugs at the border by using pumpkins. Border Protection officers found 44 pounds of drugs hidden inside the pumpkins at the Eagle Passport of Entry. And after further inspection, officers also found liquid meth 
that was hidden in more than 100 condoms. In all, the drugs are worth about 400 grand on the street. Some new numbers out today showing that inflation is still running red hot and rent is a big part of that. Talk to most any renter and they will tell you they have seen an increase or two in the past couple of years. Eric Hernandez says his rent jumped about $100 a month. I've been looking around at other places and places that I could have afforded three years ago. I can't really afford now, you know, um, but, you know, it just depends on where you live. Some renters seeing jumps of three or four hundred dollars a month. So how much are people paying rent here? According to rent.com, a two bedroom apartment is going for an average thirteen hundred dollars per month. One nonprofit that provides affordable housing is seeing an increase in calls. But right now they are maxed out. Now he sacrificed for his country when he served in Afghanistan and today a local veteran got a new home. So we want to show you retired Army Captain Derek Carter. Just this year, he was serving overseas when his platoon was ambushed in an explosive attack. Carter was severely injured. He lost his left leg and has dealt with a number of complications since then. And now the Gary Sinise Foundation is helping him adapt to life outside of the military with a brand new home. This moment's surreal. Having the opportunity to kind of see the culmination of all the hard work of the volunteers and organizations involved and making this happen is, is humbling. And this is really cool because his new home is going to help him become more independent. It has amenities like automated blinds and also low countertops. Queer and trans youth have higher rates of suicidal thoughts, depression, and substance abuse than other children their age. That's according to the Trevor Project's uh, National Health Survey for LGBTQ youth. But there is help. Mm -hmm. Camilia Juarez tells us how safe spaces like Fiesta Youth can help to transform a child's mental health. Sergio Gonzalez and Matthew Crow both struggle to find friends who understand them. Sergio felt isolated online. Life wasn't perfect. Matthew was bullied, which is why he asked us to cover his face. Being ragged on relentlessly, it's, it definitely damages you to an extreme extent. Both say their mental health hit a low point, especially after Governor Greg Abbott directed parents of trans kids to be investigated for child abuse. People in power won't let the kids just be kids. Queer youth are experiencing more suicidal thoughts across the nation and locally. In a recent San Antonio survey, queer youth experience higher rates of suicidal thoughts than others their age. Numerous research shows LGBTQ youth who find spaces where their pronouns name, choice of clothing is respected, have lower rates of suicide. That's why Fiesta Youth provides a safe, non-judgmental place for kids to express themselves. No matter what, leaving thinking, oh, people actually care about me. Overall, feel a lot better because I don't feel as bottled up as I used to. Parents, caregivers are invited to meetings. That way they can share experiences, learn what the kids are learning, and meet instructors. They can have uh, skills to um, advance, you know, in life, that they can have the, the confidence to uh, experiment with their identities. It's like a giant blanket of everybody who just knows what you're going through and just gives you comfort, unconditional comfort. A feeling Matthew and Sergio hope others can find. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look at traffic out there during the 6 o'clock commute. This is 410 at Jackson Keller. You can see, especially in the westbound lanes, traffic slow going as people try to head home, but no real big issues out there to make you aware of. Okay, and that is good. And we're going to show you another live cam out there. This is of I-10 right now. You see things look even smoother over there right now. Time is 6.08, but here's the thing. We are definitely envying some parts that are just east to us because they're getting that rain, Adam. Yes, and we had the cold front slide through our neck of the woods here in town yesterday evening. It has stalled east of San Antonio and it's acting as a little triggering mechanism for some much needed rainfall, particularly in Lavaca County, but now traveling southward into to DeWitt County as well. And this activity is 
fairly short lived, but it's nice, good soaking, heavy rainfall. A little bit of lightning and thunder even associated with it right here. We'll just pause this and I zoom in a little bit closer here between Hallettsville and Quero. That's where we have most of the activity at the moment. And this is going to be confined to areas east of San Antonio. It's not going to be drifting anywhere near town here, but closer to the Gulf coastline, we've had some of these showers and where you see the yellow that indicates about two inches of rain has fallen. So Lavaca County, just south of Hallettsville, south of Shiner, that's where most of the rain has fallen this afternoon. That's coming to an end come sunset. High thin clouds for the rest of us. 82 at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 76. A lot to talk about. Hot and humid weekend, strong cold front on Sunday night. Big temperature drop with it. We'll tell you how cold and the promising rain chances in just a bit. Adam, thank you. And don't go away because still to come on the news at 6, a San Antonio art couple is getting ready to unveil their latest project. We're going to get a first-hand look and also meet the artist. It's next in today's Hispanic Heritage Month profile. Coming up tonight on the night beat, a beloved heirloom turned piece of American history. After decades with a San Antonio family, that 1930s car, is, which is a beauty, is headed to a new home. We were sort of nervous about it going out of the family, but it's still in the family. It's just in a better, secure place. How it's going to give new life to a story of America's past. Plus, flies. Residue in the ice machine, moldy food. Yeah, it's just part of what made the health inspections at these restaurants. The other snags to their scores when we go behind the kitchen door. It's tonight on the Night Beat. Lionel and Kathy Sosa could be considered the power couple of the San Antonio art world. Each is already a respected artist in their own right, and together they've created their own masterpiece for everyone to see. And tonight, Jesse Degollado shows us where it is, along with the newest phase of the San Pedro Creek Culture Park. The panels include text. This was a first. Artist Kathy and Lionel Sosa had never seen all five panels of the mural they'd created. What jumped out? How big they are. They're monumental. Each began being drawn and painted by hand, becoming porcelain tiles, the vibrant colors just so. An artistic blend of San Antonio history as life evolved around San Pedro Creek. A story can be told in many ways. So a team of consultants, community members, and even people who used to live along San Pedro Creek had to make sure they'd gotten it right. This, they say, is their story. We just drew the pictures. In such a way, she says, that will enchant and intrigue the passerby. Creating all of these murals, even after more than 30 years of marriage, they say, really lent new meaning to the word collaboration. Same canvas at the same time in the, the same, same place, place for a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're like pushing closeness to the uh, it degree. <laughs> But we survived. We survived. We survived. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> the former high-powered advertising guru who gave all that up. I want to spend the rest of my life doing what I always wanted to do as a child. And the creative spirit who didn't consider herself an artist, but he certainly did. So he changed my life. And is this now the legacy they'll someday leave behind? You're going to make I, me I, cry. I, I, <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess. Uh, Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. For a dramatic effect, their mural and the entire new phase of the San Pedro Creek Culture Park is going to be lit up tomorrow at 6 p.m. That ceremony is going to kick off a two-day celebration between Houston Street and Cesar Chavez Boulevard. We're going to have more about the park and tomorrow's grand opening on our website, KSAT.com. Looks beautiful. Yeah, it does. Let's take a look outside with Sky 12 above Six Flags right now. Fright Fest happening out there, which means I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> I am not built for that. And Halloween is just around. And you know what's funny? I, we went to a water park, uh, SeaWorld, this summer, and it was. we were like, oh, man, this is going to be, this would be so much better if it was the fall, and now. Here we go. There you go. This is the time to be there. It is, and actually, um, Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery, they went through yes. the haunted house. and Further proof. It, it, it's great. I, no. 
That's on KSAT.com. Yes. But the video was great to watch. You oh, should watch it, it is. for sure. It's an annual tradition from Sarah, you know, with Sarah. Yes. It's, uh, it's great. And Mia joined her this year. All right. I want to get right to this and talk about our temperature drop before we even jump into our promising rain chances. Look at this right near 90. The high temperature Friday, Saturday and Sunday by Monday. We're down to 68 in the afternoon. Next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're talking low to mid 70s for highs, and that's under sunshine. So a real deal fall cold front is headed our way. It hits Sunday night and it's going to sweep away the unseasonably warm temperatures and even the humidity as well and give us some good rain chances. Cooler air is out there. Check this out. Chicago 47. Minneapolis 41, International Falls, Minnesota 36. There is some colder air out there. The cold front that's going to be headed our way hasn't even developed yet, but it's going to tap into some of this cooler air and drag it southward, and that will be affecting us as we get into next week. Until then, unseasonably warm and more humid conditions by the late Friday and especially into the weekend. Right now, temperatures 94 Kennedy, currently 90 at the airport in town officially after a high of 93, which is about 10 degrees above average. But New Braunfels 88, 98 degrees in Catula right now. We're really feeling the heat farther south down I-35. Seguin 88, Bulverde 87. You get the idea for the most part right around 90 right now. Let's fast forward to tomorrow morning. Temperatures 7 a.m. right around sunrise at the bus stop in the 60s. Hello to 64, Seguin 64, Floresville 66. Around San Antonio, I think about uh, 63 to 65. Then by the afternoon, we make it right up near 90 degrees for that high temperature underneath a lot of sunshine throughout the day. Just some high thin clouds, which is kind of what we have streaming overhead right now in a few locations. Some of those high thin cirrus clouds, which can make for a very colorful sunset. So keep your eyes peeled out there looking off to the west this evening. Dew point of 53 right now. We have the drier air in place locally. Dew points are down in the 50s, even some 40s out there, but you go closer to the Gulf Coast and it's still very sticky and humid with dew points near 70. That's because of the cold front that hit us yesterday evening. It stalled out. It got hung up right along the coastal plain. And that's why those of you in Lavaca County and DeWitt County are enjoying a few downpours because that stationary boundary is acting as the lifting mechanism to get a few showers going. But that's all staying far east of San Antonio and not affecting uh, most of our area. We're going to be dry. Dew points bump up this weekend into the 60s. It's going to be humid then. Then the humidity is swept away for tomorrow. I mentioned that stationary boundary, Lavaca County, DeWitt County. There looks like the showers and storms are building southward down that boundary a little bit. So cross your fingers, Cardin City and Cardin's County, but don't hold your breath for it. I do want to point out, I mentioned that colder air earlier. Look at that blue on the map. First time we've seen that. That's the four letter word snow, right? <laughs> Up in the Northland right now. They had a little bit of that earlier today. So yes, the fall like weather is out there. Upper level low over LA, that's gonna be heading our way. It's gonna combine with that developing cold front to slowly move through, provide lift, energy, and support to generate showers, especially Sunday night through Monday. Fast forward to 10 o'clock Sunday evening, and you can see some scattered activity likely to develop. This computer model's hinting at that, and then intermittent showers, and even a few downpours off and on throughout the day on Monday. So again, Sunday night through Monday, that's when we're expecting the rain to hit and we could see one to three inches in some neighborhoods. As for tomorrow, 7 a.m. 63 by noon, we're at 83 degrees and then right near 90 for the afternoon high. By the way, with when that cold front hits on Monday, kind of a raw day with the off and on rain, cooler temperatures, but windy as well. You'll notice some gusty winds. Oh, a raw day. We haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> it, it has been a while. Yeah, Thank you. Hopefully the Spurs don't give us a raw deal tonight. <laughs> yeah, they're home and they're battling the Thunder. Yes, this is their final tune-up mm -hmm. before the regular season starts with the Spurs next Wednesday. Wednesday. So tonight it is the Thunder and the Spurs. Josh Primo's second game back from that knee injury. Plus, Dak Prescott, well, he took another step forward today as he tries to come back and play again in the regular season. Coming up. I'm actually really excited for this game. Uh, it's my first time playing for the whole crowd uh, since last year, so really excited. Um, last game was fun, but it's always great playing in front of your uh, home fans. Spurs guard Josh Primo is ready to play at the AT&T Center tonight on Spurs game day. 
Spurs will close out preseason play tonight at home with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Tuesday night, they won at the Utah Jazz 111-104 for their first preseason win, and it also marked the return of both Kelvin Johnson and Joshua Primo, who were out with injuries. Primo, who suffered a left knee MCL sprain before the preseason started, played 18 minutes and scored 10 points against the Jazz. Knee feels great. Um, I put in a lot of work in rehab trying to make sure I'm, I'm as stable as possible. And I feel confident about it. So going into it, it wasn't really about my knee. It's more about just shaking the rust off and getting out there getting some game reps. Spurs are hosted Thunder tonight at 7 at the AT&T Center. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy said today that quarterback Dak Prescott, who was limited in practice this morning, will follow a similar plan as yesterday when he went through quarterback school drills and through the receivers after practice. Today is the first day Dak went through practice since hurting his right thumb in week one. Coach McCarthy said that Dak is still in the rehab phase and that backup Cooper Rush is preparing to start against the Eagles. Zeke knows that Dak is doing his best to get back as soon as possible. Uh, he's been ready. Um, he's been ready to come back mentally. Mentally been ready to come back. Uh, so, I mean, he's, he's ready to come back. We all know the type of competitor he is, the type of leader he is, and uh, we just got to make sure that, you know, bring him back safely. And, but uh, no, there's no doubt in my mind, you know, when he gets back, we'll pick up. Rush is 4-0 this season, while Eagles QB Jalen Hurts is 5-0. They would be the first opposing quarterbacks to face off 4-0 or better since Peyton Manning and Vince Young in 2009. The big game coverage road trip tomorrow night will take us to Bandera for the first time this season. The Bulldogs are 5-1 and one and getting ready to face the Pearsall Mavericks in a District 14 4 a 2 contest. Fresh off of a bye week, we asked the Bulldogs what this team is all about. All about we are one. That's all it's about. Sticking together, playing with each other, sticking as family. Family. It's all about family. We play for each other, practice for each other. That's it. It's all about being like, you know, knowing each other, you know, getting together, all that. Because, you know, we are one, so that's our motto, so. We are one? Yes, sir. I mean, it's our motto. We are one. We're a family. We're all about being together, working hard, pushing through any adversity we have to. The road trip will take us to Bandera, Bernie Champion, and will end the night at TMI. Congratulations to Bernie Geneva senior outside hitter Corinne Garrow, who joined the 2000 Kill Club on Tuesday night. This video, courtesy of her brother Tom, captured the awesome moment. Corinne entered that match 15 kills short of 2K, and she now stands at 2,004 kills for her high school career. She also set a new school record for kills, and she helped her team win 3-0 on senior night to end the regular season. Bernie Geneva is playing at Carnet Word Corpus Christi right now in a district tournament match. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Right, pretty impressive indeed. Thank, Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. The Parkland school shooter avoided a death sentence in a Florida courtroom this afternoon. Yeah, that shocked and angered some of the family members of the victims as the jury recommendations against him were read aloud. Mike Valerio with the latest. Tears are shed, hands held tight. We, the jury, unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt the existence of the aggravating factor. Nicholas Cruz knowingly created a great risk of death to many persons, yes. Only a judge's voice cuts through the silence in a Florida courtroom as she reads aloud a jury's recommended sentences to Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. We the jury unanimously find that the aggravating factors that were proven beyond a reasonable doubt outweigh the mitigating circumstances established. No. Cruz is now set to be formally sentenced November 1st after pleading guilty last October to 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder for killing 14 students and three school staff members in a shooting rampage at Florida's Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in February 2018. I pray that that animal suffers every day of his life in jail. Some victims' family members showing clear frustration as life sentence after life sentence is recommended and Cruz avoids a death sentence. I sent my daughter to school and she was shot eight times. I am so beyond disappointed and frustrated with this outcome. I do not understand. I just don't understand this. You set a precedent for the next mass killing. 
and nothing happens to you, you'll get life in jail. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. The State Department confirms that a U.S. citizen has died in Ukraine. His sister says his name was Dane Partridge from Rexburg, Idaho. He's a U.S. Army veteran and a father of five. The 34-year-old had been fighting alongside the Ukrainians since the end of April. His sister said, quote, he thought he was fighting for a noble cause. Partridge and some other men were cleaning trenches in eastern Ukraine when they were ambushed by two Russian vehicles. Partridge was shot in the head and then died at a hospital on Tuesday. His body is on its way back to the U.S. There is more evidence that the cost of everyday living is increasing. Yeah, you knew it, but now there's more evidence, you know, and that's fueling concerns that the Fed will once again increase interest rates to fight inflation. ABC's Morgan Norwood explains what that means for your money. New inflation numbers backing up what millions of Americans have been lamenting about for months. The prices of everything, gas, shelter, food, and medical costs still climbing. The consumer price index rising 0.4% in September, higher than expected, with families seeing it most at the grocery store. Food prices jumping 0.8%, while the energy index fell 2.1%. For so many Americans, this is a, a real burden, and um, at the cost of living has really gone up. And while wages have gone up as well, we all know they're not keeping pace with inflation. And while gas prices did go down just slightly last month, the cost of gas has been creeping up as the month of October ticks on, mostly due to the temporary refinery closures. Californians paying top dollar for a gallon of gas, the average $6.44. That is killing us, but you know what I mean? What else can we do? And prices could continue to climb with OPEC cutting oil production by 2 million barrels a day. The White House accusing Saudi Arabia, a major oil supplier, of playing politics by refusing to delay the OPEC decision until after the midterm election and coercing other OPEC member states to support the move. Saudi Arabia saying the accusations are not based on facts. Though the OPEC decision isn't reflected in today's consumer report, the impact will become painfully clear next month. For now, President Biden says the reality of the report shows that there's more work to do and the Fed set to take up that task of tamping down inflation. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said we're going to raise interest rates and keep them high until we see real evidence that inflation is coming down. And this report today certainly doesn't show us that. And due to inflation, millions of Social Security recipients will get a historic 8.7 percent boost in benefits next year. But sadly, experts say that gain will likely be eaten away by the rising cost of living. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. You might not think a lab session could spark joy, but that's what's happening on the city's east side. Art lab sessions, what they are and how they're geared toward bringing people together. Next. Visual performing, creative and cultural arts return to the Carver Community Cultural Center for the fall season. Tiffany Huerta shows us how those classes are allowing people to express themselves and come together. The first thing that we hear is our mother's heartbeat, so the, you know, the spirit of the drum is, is in us. Orlin Gonzalez, who goes by Tebow, is passionate about teaching the drums at the Carver Community Cultural Center. It's in my soul. It's, it's what I love to do, uh, teaching and waking the spirit of a lot of the students. This is one of the many courses available for this fall's art lab sessions. We have ceramics classes, we have chess. The six week fun and inspiring courses are offered on Saturday mornings. I think it has a tremendous impact in bringing people to a place that offers continued development um, in all different types of art forms, whether it's music, dance, uh, makers type things. It just keeps people involved. It gives them joy. The art lab sessions at the Carver started decades ago. Some other courses they offer include contemporary dance, theater, and ballet. So the course that I'm teaching, uh, it's a West African based movement class. Um, and in that course, there's just lots of community. Uh, there's the circle, there's the weighted movement, the rhythm in our feet and our torsos. 
Dance instructor Tanisha Payne welcomes the community to her class where dancing is giving students a chance to express themselves freely and creatively. Dance is who we are, it's a part of us. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And now we're taking a live look outside. This is near our airport, 88 degrees out there right now. Now it's okay. You know, it's funny. Yesterday we were complaining about, oh, the humidity is back. And now we're back to complaining about, oh, we need rain. <laughs> of course, yes, we do need rain. And off to the east, you can see some clouds that are higher on the upper right-hand side of that camera. And those are some showers that are far east of San Antonio right now, affecting parts of Lavaca County and even uh, DeWitt County currently. So we'll take a look at those closely on the radar in just a bit but around town locally right now we're at 90 degrees and as we go through the evening we'll see our temperatures gradually falling through the 80s and then the 70s close look at those showers and more promising rain chances for the rest of us in the days ahead we'll dive into when and how much we could see along with a bigger temperature drop a real deal fall cold front see you in a bit All right, if you're wanting things to feel more like fall or have a better chance at rain, maybe both. Yes. Things are looking up, Adam Kasky. Yeah, for both. That's right. It's good. I like what I see coming together. The ingredients should be mixed together properly in the days ahead. Still need a little patience. This isn't going to happen tomorrow or this weekend, but by the end of the weekend, and to kickstart next week, you're going to see and feel the changes. So hot and even humid this weekend will be probably in the low 90s for highs. Then the strong cold front hits Sunday night. That brings promising rain chances and a real fall like feel to the air outside. We're going to get to the temperatures in a second. Let's start with the rain chances and going forward. Nothing really until we get to Sunday night. I mean, even late Saturday or Sunday evening, we could have a brief shower, but mostly Sunday night. That's when we're expecting the activity to really um, start to pick up and become scattered in nature and then off and on intermittent all the way through the day on Monday. Now we have a few showers out there right now. This is from our KSAC Connect on the Weather Authority app, and this is from Sheridan, Texas. This is basically east of Hallettsville along Highway 90. You see the puddles of water on the ground, and he said actually one of those storms knocked down a few of the flagpoles that he has in his yard. So here's a look at the radar, and this action is along the stalled frontal boundary that moved through yesterday evening. Then it got hung up along the coastline, and sometimes these stalled boundaries act as triggering mechanisms for showers. And this has brought some much needed rainfall. Heavy rain right now, especially in and around Quero, and where you see this purple, that's the heaviest rainfall activity on the north end of Quero and just north of town as well. This is some much needed rainfall, those purples being the heaviest rain. As for rainfall totals from this, uh, so far we've seen over two inches in some locations, not everywhere, but in parts of Lavaca County and DeWitt County, where you have these yellows, those are the two to three inch rainfalls and it's still raining here. It's building southward, but I do anticipate this activity to really uh, start to fall apart as the sun sets. Otherwise, what we're watching is Tropical Storm Carl, Southern Gulf of Mexico, quickly touching on this. It's moving to the south, moving away from us, not strengthening. It should make landfall as a low end tropical storm in southern Mexico. Upper level disturbance over Los Angeles that's going to head our way and work with a developing cold front which should hit us both hitting us Sunday night into Monday. Here's our future cast. Most of the day Sunday looking dry, but after dark Sunday, some scattered showers developing even a few downpours and you look at the future cast here and basically intermittent passing areas of rain with a little bit of thunder and lightning. And it wouldn't surprise me if we saw a quick one to three inches in some neighborhoods by the end of Monday. We could have up to three inches. So cross your fingers for your neighborhood. Temperatures 93 was our high temperature today. That's 10 degrees above average. The record 97. Notice the 70s right now up in the Panhandle 70 in Lubbock 68 in Amarillo. Meanwhile, 91 Del Rio uh, Catula had a high of 99 now 98 and uh, officially right now in town. We're 90 degrees here in San Antonio. As we start the day tomorrow, I do think we'll be in the 60s. So early morning in the 60s with some 50s in the hill country. Then by the afternoon, we make it right up near 90 degrees for the high temperature. So Catula after 99 today, 
We're looking 92 tomorrow. OK, so not quite as hot. The humidity will start to come back by tomorrow evening. So I think you're not going to really notice much of the humidity tomorrow. Temperatures near 90 degrees above average, but the humidity is back by this weekend. Good amount of sunshine tomorrow. High thin clouds streaming overhead and a southeasterly breeze at 5 to 15. Here's that temperature drop. You ready for it? Monday down to 68 in the afternoon. Kind of a raw day, also gusty and windy with that strong north wind behind the cold front up to 35 miles per hour. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we're looking at high temperatures in the 70s, low to mid 70s with that lower humidity underneath a lot of good fall sunshine next week. My eyes are just right there on the 68. All right, thank <laughs> you. You know what mine are on? What? Calibration. Of course. <laughs> Thurs. That's right, calibration. So we, uh, I've got my third of four calibration points that had to get done on these thermometers that I'm putting together. So let's take a look at this one. This involves an ice bath. Yes, a good properly mixed ice bath, especially with this ice. I call it Sonic ice. It's like the kind you get at Sonic. Oh yeah. Is 32 degrees. Now I'm measuring 32.4, but that's within the range of error. It's good. 32 is close enough there for that. And put the thermometers in, watch them quickly respond because of their high resolution, just saying. <laughs> and then you give them enough time to adjust and then you mark the level on there and that will be my third calibration point. And of course I note the temperature, you know, of that calibration point in my notes. Now I have to get below freezing, which we'll be doing next. And I'm going to show you how I do that in upcoming Thermometer Thursday. Stay okay. tuned. Looking forward to that. Thing. Look at this beautiful live edge thermometer, right? And that this is beautiful so oak. cool. I saw yeah. that in the weather center earlier. I love uh -huh. that. Yep, this is a nice oak and oh, here's the winner. Yeah, there it is. All right, today's thermometer winner. We've got Jody Smith Ooh. of Pleasanton. Yeah, that's some local oak that came down in just a storm a few years ago. So Jody, I contacted you, the Jody Smith that got the email. Otherwise, ksat.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Congratulations, Jody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. It's October 13th. Police called to the Splatch Bar and Grill around 2.30 this morning. They say several men got into a fight, and one of them, a 41-year-old, was stabbed in the back multiple times. The others involved took off before police got there. New details this evening on the investigation into the group who managed to move migrants from San Antonio to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts by plane. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says those migrants may have been lured illegally and that while he cannot release their names, he has identified multiple suspects. He says he's looking at unlawful restraint charges and that his investigators are working with the migrants to provide witness statements. $956 million. That's how much. InfoWars host Alex Jones will have to pay to the victims of Sandy Hook. Jones in court again for falsely insisting for years that that mass shooting was a hoax. He claimed it was staged by actors who were following a script and that it was written by the government in order to build support for gun control. Jones skipped the verdict today, but then mocked it on InfoWars. He also filed for bankruptcy and is now asking his audience for donations. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. And where do they stay? The firehouse. And you can save yourself a phone call by staying in the replica of the Ghostbusters firehouse. This one's in Portland, Oregon. Now the house is fully equipped for all the ghost calls. There is the Ecto-1, the emergency vehicle, traps, proton packs, and if you really need to get serious, you can put on a fight suit. And yes, there is even puffed marshmallows. <laughs> and you can reserve your night on the Vacasas website starting October 21st. While some kiddos cower during horror movies, these two siblings oh revel in them. Okay, so that's six-year-old Dominic, eight-year-old Aubriella, and they're hooked on terror. They also love wearing horror movie costumes. They just try to scare each other. Oh my gosh, do they wake mom and dad up in the middle of the <laughs> night with this? These kids dress as characters from the Halloween series, Friday the 13th, or other horror movies with a vast collection of creepy rubber masks. Mom says Mike, Michael Myers from Halloween has become Classic. a mainstay in their family. So much so that the kids have a weekly screening of his movies. I wonder if they get like 
The, a PG have, a PG version cannot exist so of those movies. Many questions. Yes. Okay. We may be over two months from Christmas, but Elf star Will Ferrell and actor Ryan Reynolds are teaming up to help get you into the holiday spirit this year. The comedic duo will headline the new Apple TV Plus Christmas movie, Spirited. So what it is, it's an updated take on the classic holiday fable, A Christmas Carol, and Reynolds is stepping in as Ebenezer Scrooge. Spirited debuts in theaters on November 11th, but hold on, because if you have Apple TV Plus, just wait a week, because that's where it's going to stream starting November 18th. Santa, I know mm -hmm. him. <laughs> Elon Musk promoting his latest product. I'm not sure why you would want it, but okay. The, the eccentric billionaire took to social media to promote his new venture into the fragrance business. He's selling a perfume named Burnt Hair on his Boring Company website. Okay, y'all listen to this. Boring, of course, the name of his tunneling company. Well, the site describes this perfume as, quote, the essence of repugnant, repugnant desire. What in the world? He is messing with all of us. Musk is selling the perfume for $100 each plus tax and shipping. Okay, and it's been verified that he sold a million dollars worth of that stuff. Wow. Burnt hair? Why would you want it? The essence of repugnant desire. Thank you for oh, joining us. Yeah, we'll leave that to